Hi, this is Alex Coulomb of Agile Lens, and today we'll be looking at the new Chaos feature in Unreal Engine 4.23. 4.23 was just released, and this seems to be the feature that most people are the most excited about. I know I am. Now, unfortunately, to enable Chaos, you can't actually use the launcher build of 4.23. You do need to use a source build, but you can go over into Learn to download the Chaos Examples project, which we'll be looking at today. That is under Learn, Engine Feature Samples, and Chaos Destruction Demo. You'll see there that it requires a compiled source build of 4.23. So once you create that, you're actually going to want to save that into your GitHub source code. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to set that up, but if you follow the instructions on how to create a GitHub Unreal Engine source build, then this is basically what the process will look like. You'll have your project set up there in your GitHub Unreal Engine folder. You'll go through the setup process, you'll generate your project files, and then when you open up your Visual Studio solution, you will want to do a Chaos Destruction demo build with the development editor for Windows 64. I did this in the batch builder so I could also do a standard build over in the UE4 editor target. You just need this B compile chaos equals true line of code. That's the only difference from how this typically looks. And once all of that is built, then you can open up the Chaos Destruction demo, which you can do directly from here if you want. You could do debug, start new instance, or just double click on it from in here in its .u project file. The instructions for looking at the Chaos Destruction demo, as we'll be doing in this video, can be found in this forum post that I've linked to in the description. And if you want to enable Chaos in your full Unreal Engine 4.23 source build, those steps are here, but again, you can do as I did and just do both at once using a batch build. Okay, and here we are in the Chaos Destruction demo, the entry map 00. And basically, I'll just be reading through these and walking you through a little bit of what my understanding is of what's going on in Chaos Destruction. I am by no means an expert in this. I'm just kind of exploring it. Um, I'm familiar with Unreal Engine's former way of doing destruction, and I'm just excited for this new method, which seems to be much more efficient and realistic. So with that said, here we go. Chaos Destruction Demo. Welcome to the Chaos Destruction Demo. In this project, you'll find a series of levels located in content maps. Here they are. The aim of these is to introduce you to the foundational concepts of chaos destruction. Thank you, Epic. The entry hallway offers a brief explanation of each of the maps available to you to explore. And of course, here I am in the editor. I guess, you know, before I press play, I could go through and just kind of click on things and see, okay, that's a geometry collection. <laughs> that's also a geometry collection. I don't know what I'm looking for. Maybe to see if something's a static mesh. <laughs> these are all geometry collections. Oh, there we go. That's a blueprint anchor field. I'm just clicking on stuff randomly right now to see what they are. Okay, we have a Niagara actor for the chaos system. Column, that's a geometry collection. An anchor field. A trigger blueprint. Ooh, look at that. An FS strike node. Trigger blueprint. I actually have no idea what that is. Maybe we're going to find out in a second because I'm about to press play. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah. Hello, little info box thing. I guess it's just telling me that this is an information area. Thanks. <laughs> Number one, geometry collections. Of course, destruction begins with the creation of a geometry collection. In the geometry collection map, which is the first one we'll explore down here. Oops, I can't <laughs> move down to the map area anymore without doing Shift F1. That's the first map. Destruction begins with the creation of geometry collection. We will walk through some of the options to consider when setting these up, as well as some best practice recommendations. This map is also a demonstration of a destruction simulation in real time, followed by a similar example, pre-cached and triggered through a level sequence. So the pre-cached version will be much more efficient, and I think we'll just be learning in there about why geometry collections are set up in a way that is different from just your standard static mesh options. The second map will be about, once you've created a geometry collection, you'll then want to learn about fracturing and how things will break apart during simulation. In this map, we'll walk you through the basics of fracturing and also clustering, a system to control the conditions under which breaking occurs. So real quick, just to give us a little preview of what that looks like. You have your modes, these are all familiar to you, and then over here, your fracture edit mode, 
and all this kind of stuff helps you determine how something will fracture, be destroyed, et cetera, et cetera. And this one lets you see how something breaks apart when you're separating it out in real time. Anyway, you'll see that shortly. There we go. There's the fracture. Does it come back? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how easy it is to rewind a fracture. Okay, in map three, fields. Fields are a new system powered through blueprints, which allow you to affect your chaos assets in many different ways. In this map, we'll be introduced to a few concepts that will help us get started with our own field-driven simulations. Cool, I haven't played with fields at all, so I'm also excited to learn more about these. Nice, that looked like maybe a, like a little trigger volume that might have created the, um, the starting point of the explosion. That's pretty cool. All right. Number four, the fourth map will be about Niagara. Once we're able to simulate a sequence of rigid body destruction, it's a good idea to further augment, <laughs> augment the visual impact using Niagara. Breaking collision and trailing events can all be leveraged to spawn particle effects. This map gives you a brief walkthrough of how to set this up. I'll admit, I actually haven't played with the new Niagara particles much at all, and I'm saying new, though I know they've been around for a while, so we'll see how much of a fool I make of myself when talking about that. Hey, those look like particle effects. Great. I don't know what kind of virus was inside that column that did that, but wonderful. And okay, the fifth map, which will be called Gameplay. Geometry collections send collisions and break events that can trigger gameplay. This map provides a series of examples to help you get started. Okay, so we have something monitoring and a chaos box, and we're going to click on it. Bam, detected. Okay, cool. So yeah, you could say once something gets destroyed, trigger all the enemies attacking you, whatever. All right, and that's just the, uh, the original room. I really do love the way Unreal Engine uh, sets up these kinds of example worlds. You know, when I first started with Unreal Engine many years ago, um, I say many years ago, it was like 2014, uh, it was really helpful to be able to go through these kinds of maps where it was explaining, you know, blueprints and different kinds of things like that. And I like that they're still doing this. So this is great. I'm excited to dive in more to this. In the next video, we'll look at the first map, Geometry Collections. See you there.